Okay, so this next unit is going to be on ethics, and I thought we'd just review the assignments first, so you have that in the back of your mind as we're going through these notes. There is an ethics quiz, same as usual, unlimited tries. You'll have everything permanently embedded in your memory by the 10th time you're through the quiz, but there are links inside the quiz to notes and resources to get you through the questions in that, so please Watch the videos that are linked in there. You can right click, open a new tab so you don't close out the quiz. But this is a, um, there's some PE EIT questions on there that'll help you prepare for that too if you're getting through it. There's also a case study presentation. So part of the um, SLO student learning objectives for this class is presenting your work. And this will get everybody used to making videos and sharing videos so that your project presentations at the end of the semester will go a little bit smoother. So this consider this kind of a trial run for how to put together a presentation and post it. And you will also be commenting on the presentations of others. So you'll post your video or a link to your video and you can make that however you want, just with your cell phone, PowerPoint, Prezi, Use whatever software you want, and it's probably going to involve posting a link to the file or downloading it to YouTube or something, because the file is probably too big to put in that discussion forum. But Okay, for your presentation, what you're going to do is choose an engineering disaster, and I'll give you resources with lists and lists of these that you can go through, and um, you're going to tell everybody what happened if you were there. What should have been done to prevent it? This is a really important thing. How was the case resolved? So how many people lost their engineering license? What was the money involved? How are people compensated? And we're going to go through fault and event tree analysis and how to create risk controls to mitigate safety concerns. And the very last piece of it is to think about any ethical issues surrounding your project and maybe make a little statement for your project report in there. Or you can also think about any ethical issues that might come up in your job, your future internship or something, and come up with a plan now for how to address that. Okay, so going through some notes, and these notes are linked in here as well. There are lists and lists of um, disasters. It's kind of depressing to start reading through these wiki pages. These are um, on here. You can organize them in terms of the, the death toll when they happened amusement parks, aviation, cables are really scary to work around. That's a long list. Elevators, you're not going to want to ride in an elevator after this. Explosions, if you're doing anything in chemical engineering, the energy industry, anything that's flammable, you're going to have to be really, really careful working around anything that's flammable. Wow, this is a long list. So anyways, there's, there's a lot of incidents to choose from, and I want you to choose something real that really happened and understand that, that there are risks going into engineering and you should be very familiar with um, OSHA regulations and safety data sheets and work somewhere that's safe. That's one of your considerations when you're choosing what company to work through. Um, this is also going into um, NSPE and some of the engineering societies and certification. So let me just pull up NSPE's site here. They have an entire section here on ethics. So you can go through the code, read the engineer's creed, and it has that in various different languages. I will also very much um, encourage you to get a membership with these guys. So if you say, membership, become a member, and go over to their um, student site, you can actually get a membership for free. So this is the National Society of Professional Engineers. 
When you graduate with your bachelor's degree, you will probably be taking their fundamental of engineering exam, engineering training. So that's just what a lot of universities are doing to help become accredited. And they have um, lists of internships, they have conferences. So I will really encourage you to become a member for free. And if you send me a screenshot of becoming a member, I will give you some event field trip points for, for joining this society. So become familiar with their resources. And then some of the questions in that quiz and these guys, this is like straight out of some of those certifications and tests. Okay, so think through these. So what is an ethical concern? Like, is what clothes you're wearing? Well, if you have to wear protective equipment, PPEs, personal protective equipment, then yes, your clothing is an ethical concern at your job. Um, what's most important? So this is where it's not about legal standards or company standards or economic. Ethical standards should be the most important above all of those. There's a few um, definitions. So skepticism, relativism, absolutism. And for engineering situations, you are expected to be absolutist. So the laws of nature are the same for everyone. Gravity does not change from one country to another. What is carcinogenic does not change from one state to another. So absolutist, it doesn't matter what the country's laws are or what the company allows. It's what is going to you know, safeguard the health and well-being of the population. Okay, so here's some more example questions and um, some examples of things that aren't quite ethical. Like it's not just carcinogenic in the state of California, of course, that's not. There's some interesting artificial intelligent um, consideration moving up. And on that NSPAE website, you can see some of the current cases going through. So like if you're designing a vehicle to drive itself, in that program, you have to decide, is the life of the driver of the vehicle more important or a pedestrian that might jump in front of your car more important? So do you drive off a cliff to avoid the pedestrian and kill the driver? Or do you kill the pedestrian and save? So it's there's some interesting little dilemmas that are coming up with um, programming with ethics. Okay, so there's some more vocabulary type things, how to deal with conflict. And this is another reason why engineers work in groups and you want to be a member of engineering societies. You want to have all of your work certified. So intentions do not count for anything. You need to check and double check your work and think through all the worst case scenarios that you can. Um, and it's a matter of regulations are there. They were created because they are probably initiated from some horrible disaster and a bunch of people died. And then they created a new regulation to try and keep that from happening again. But you're going to be dealing with new chemicals, new structures, things that have never been tested or built before. And so regulations are not going to keep you safe. So it, it comes down to, you know, everybody being good on their own, which is a little bit scary. But after reading all of these horror stories, you have to realize that buildings are not collapsing around everybody. And, and it's, you know, it's generally safe. So it, it helps. So anyways, yeah, this is a good quote from, from John Adams, that it only works if people are kind of good on their own. This is um, part of when you are going to interviews for a job, they're not just looking at the grades on your transcript. They're going to be asking you questions to see how you would handle dangerous situations. Are you willing to be honest about problem areas and able to admit 
mistakes that were made, and that's that's really important. And you'll see some of the disasters that happened through communication issues and people hiding their mistakes. Um, here's some history. This is in the Louvre in France, the Code of Hammurabi. If a builder builds a house and it collapses, that builder shall be put to death. This was the laws of ancient Babylon. So you can decide, is that um, fair? That's just, right? Or if you kill the son of the owner, they kill the son of the builder. Is that fair? That's kind of scary, right? So this is where an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth was, was written on this. And you can compare that to some of the rules and regulations that are, are going on right now. Here's um, National Science Foundation does some misconduct cases. This is interesting. A lot of plagiarism. And this stuff, realize it, it's starting right now while you're in school. You're building a reputation for yourself. So the other people you're in a classroom with, you'll see them after this in industry. And they'll remember you as either the person that really studied and did their own work, or you'll be remembered as the person who copied everybody's stuff and cheated and and that that reputation it'll it'll follow you so be very careful um, fabrication and falsification this is really awful and there's more of it that goes on than you'd like to think but um, as technology progresses it's getting easier and easier to identify this and stop it um, you can see some horror stories of graduate student fabricating data. It's it's never pretty, so don't don't go down that. Um, yeah, here's the the Journal of Cell Biology. It's um, the medical community. It's really hard to reproduce results sometimes, and so there's been a lot of fabrication for um, a lot of money in pharmaceutical industry to get things through FDA processes. Here's the engineering cycle. So success leads to overconfidence. This is like the Titanic, right? Oh, the Titanic is insinkable. We're invincible. And then the Titanic crashes into an iceberg and sinks. A bunch of people die. And after the failure, everybody gets concerned and Safety factors go up and buildings become stronger. And then five, 10 years down the road, people forget about the boat that sank and they start feeling invincible again and the, and the cycle repeats itself. So the moral of the story is don't ever be too overconfident in yourself <laughs> and use, use large safety factors and pay attention to disasters. Even if it was five years ago, 10 years ago, don't let history repeat itself because that's a really, really sad thing. Um, be very aware of your work environment. And I'd say do not work for a company that is not concerned with your safety because it's not worth any paycheck if, if you're in an unsafe work environment. So that's okay to tell your boss, no, I'm not going to do that. It's not safe. You have to be able to stand up for yourself and... Um, keep things safe. Here's the engineer's creed. This is, there's actually, some of the universities in Canada have a ring ceremony where engineers give this pledge. It's almost like a medical doctor or something. So they have, the ring is made out of steel from a bridge that failed and they leave the metal jaggedy. So it kind of digs into your finger and is a constant reminder of the failure that can happen if you're not on your toes at all times. So people, you know, put your right hand on your calculator and repeat after me, I pledge. This is a, you know, this is a thing. And you can see that on the NSPE site too. This is the, um, the engineer's creed is on here. So 1954. Okay, a few more questions. Here's a timeline of some disasters that happened. Some of these videos are worth watching. My grandfather was actually a miner 
And he had some horror stories from working in the mines. It actually got so bad that one day he refused to go back down there. He was a World War II vet. And the stories coming out of the mines were worse than he saw in World War II. He was a radio guy, so working up in Alaska, not on the front lines. But the mines, that's that's his horror story. Um, dam failures, really big problem. There's a Titanic. This is, you know, Houston is a... Um, we have a lot of stuff coming in and out of our port, international. And this is an example of, of something that happened with the shipping industry. The Boston molasses disaster. This is a tidal wave of Boston, of tidal wave of molasses comes through Boston. Some more dam failures. There's, there's water wars, right? That the farmers want the water and the people in the city want the water and the environmentalists don't want to messing around with the water. So while engineers are trying to build the dam, other people are coming in at night and dynamiting it and getting angry about it. And this is a real dangerous thing to have a dam failure. Here's um, airships, hydrogen versus helium. Okay, so why were they using something that was explosive? Why were they using hydrogen? Well, America had a monopoly on helium. And so the Germans said, well, we don't need your helium. We can use hydrogen. So there's, there's political stories intertwined with all of this, too. Um, environmental, the Dust Bowl is considered an engineering disaster. That's agricultural engineering practices that led to the, to the Dust Bowl. Here's some Texas stuff. So read about some of these things that have happened in Texas, especially if you're going into the energy industry. And a few of these things have happened recently enough that when you go and work with people, some of the old guys were there when these disasters happened. Like they know someone who died in this situation. So, um, yeah, look at the Texas City disaster. This was huge, huge explosion. And, you know, some of the disasters, we'll never know how many people died. There's some airline disasters, oil spills, um, building collapses, fancy brand new hotel that, and of course it collapses the worst time possible, the Valentine's Day dance, and it's crowded. And talk to anybody from Kansas and they'll tell you about the Hyatt Regency Hotel collapse. This is really sad, the Ocean Ranger, 84. Every single person on that thing died. Really, if you're thinking about going into the energy industry, become familiar with, with some of these situations that have happened and decide if you want to put yourself in that. Um, so there's a lot of storage explosions, just maintenance, how you store it and how you transport it. So any kind of um, chemicals that you're working around you have to be very, very careful, especially if you're working um, across country borders internationally. This is probably the saddest one, this disaster. It took out an entire city. It's just really, really horrible. Now, I have a whole set of notes on um, the space program and some of the disasters that happened there. So it's, yeah, a little bit um, depressing to see all of these, but you go in with your eyes wide open and become familiar with the engineering societies so that if there is a problem, you know where to go to get help. Okay, so um, safety engineering, and this is there's safety minutes at the beginning of most engineering meetings. It's a very big part of any project that you'll be in is identifying risks and mitigating risks. So kind of looking at the chain of reactions that could happen that would create a bad situation. And then how do you manage that risk? How do you lower the risk? So this is, um, again, some more vocabulary the two big types of trees, so event tree analysis and fault tree analysis. And event tree 
So if you have an event that happens and then you look at all of the consequences that fall out of it, and then the fault tree is what happens before the catastrophe. So this fails and then this fails and then this fails and all of those failures lead up to the catastrophe. And you can look at it from, from each side. So let's say you have some model rocket and the parachute is packed too tight. So what's gonna happen? Well, maybe it doesn't eject. And maybe it does eject, but then it doesn't unwind. And you can assign probabilities to everything along this, and maybe it's not an exact probability, you estimate it. And then at the very end, you can estimate the probabilities of different consequences happening. So here's the, the fault tree. You can use logic diagrams and or nor kind of flow charts. So let's say we don't want the failure. What would lead to the launch being shut down? So what would stop the launch? Well, maybe the igniter is bad or maybe the batteries are dead or maybe it, something got disconnected or maybe something is not plugged in right. The switch is bad. So all of these different things and each of them would lead to the same result of it fails to launch. And you can add up the probabilities of everything to see what the overall probability is. I have another YouTube on how to set up flowcharts. I'm not gonna make you create anything too, um, too involved here, but grab some of the shapes. The different shapes mean different things. So starting and ending or step, if you're gonna, go this way or that way, you're making some kind of a decision. That's what the, the diamond is for. And all of these shapes are connected with arrows. So here's the fault tree. So the event would be the lights are off. And then, well, whose fault is it? Here's all the faults. So maybe the light bulb burnt out and maybe there's a fault in the circuit or maybe there's cloud cover and the whole thing. So there's, there's a whole chain of events that would lead to darkness, right? So that's the fault tree. Here's another, this is good. So fault is everything that's leading up to the bad event. And then after the event happens, what are all the consequences? And you can try and prevent it on the fault tree side. And then what, after it happens, right, if the fire starts, then you try and put the fire out as quickly as possible. So you try and minimize the consequences over here too. And there's some more examples of fault and event trees. So risk controls. Do you put up a fence so someone doesn't fall off the stairs? Do you wear protective equipment? Do you have smoke alarms and heat alarms and fail safes? So what risks, how are you going to, you know, stop the bad thing from happening? And you can attach your risk controls. You're controlling the risk with something to your event tree or fault tree analysis and show how it changes the probability of a bad event happening. Okay, so have one person, or if you're doing this individually, put together a simple fault or event tree for your, um, for your ethics case. Last thing, here's a risk matrix, and this is real. This is from industry. So you're looking at, for this thing, how likely is it to happen so is it never going to happen? Is this, you know, a meteorite is going to fall out of the sky and crash your factories? It's probably not going to happen versus, yeah, yeah, chances are in the next year that will happen. And then if it does happen, how horrible are the consequences? So is a bunch of people going to die or is someone, you know, going to slip on some water and maybe you know, hurt their, their hip or something. So you look at 
how horrible the consequences are, both in, you know, personnel getting hurt and in uh, monetary losses for the consequences versus the probability. And, and of course, the situations you need to, to take care of immediately would be this, this red. So high likelihood it will happen. And if it does happen, it'll be a horrible catastrophe. Okay, so skim through these, look at some of the different risk control measurements and take this stuff seriously because chances are sometime in your career, you'll be in some situation that is not safe and you wanna take that seriously and do the maintenance that needs to happen and fix what needs to be fixed. If your boss or your company is not gonna support you in it, that's what the engineering societies are there for, to help you out. And sometimes you're gonna make the decision that, hey, I'm not gonna work for this company anymore and it's worth it to just look for a different job because you don't wanna get messed up in, in any of this stuff. Okay, so hopefully this will not be too scary of an assignment and you'll have some fun putting together some presentations and seeing some of the other presentations other people have done and think through any safety or ethical issues when it comes to your 1201 project too.